It seems fitting that the Prado in Madrid is wrapping itself up like a present to celebrate a milestone birthday. The celebrations will last all year, kicked off by an exhibition aptly titled A Place of Memory. The exhibition is divided in eight chapters, showcasing not only singular moments of Prado's history, but also their connection to important moments in the history of Spain. For example, for the country, the fall of Queen Isabel II in 1868 was decisive. It was equally fundamental for Prado because the museum stopped being a royal institution and became a national one. 150 pieces from the Prado's own collection are on display for this exhibition, including paintings by Spanish masters like Diego Velázquez and Francisco de Goya. But also works by international geniuses like Italian Sandro Botticelli, all of which are on display with dozens of other paintings on loan from other museums. These 30 works show the dialogue between national and international artists with Prado's collection. We wanted to highlight in this exhibition one of the things that makes Prado unique when compared to other museums. Its active role in developing paintings in the 19th and 20th centuries here in Europe and also in different places. The period French painter Edouard Manet spent in Prado in 1865 was central for his career and for the development of Western painting. Great part of North American John Singer Sargent's work was inspired by his observation of Velasquez's paintings in the rooms of Prado. Prado's collection was also very important in forging the personality of a great artist like Pablo Picasso, for example. Side by side, visitors can see the original painting by Velázquez and the one Picasso copied as part of his studies in the early 1900s at Prado. There's also an unlikely piece in the middle of the exhibition that can't help but catch a visitor's eye. One of the crucial moments in Prado's history happened in 1936. Franco took over the power and his dictatorship posed a very significant threat to the museum. In November of 1936, nine bombs fell on Prado's roof and a few others around the museum grounds. One of these bombs was donated to the museum a few years ago. In this exhibition, the bomb was put between two large photographs. One shows an initiative called the Itinerant Museum, in which copies of Prado's masterpieces were taken to almost 200 isolated villages. The other photograph shows a completely empty room. The artworks had to be taken elsewhere because of the civil war. The Prado survived the war, and its priceless collection largely remains intact for future generations to enjoy. 200 years of an institution like Prado, a place that makes Spain proud, mean a great deal of subjects and a rich documentation to be featured.